गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थियोरम ऑन कंपैक्ट मेट्रिक स्पेसेस सपोज एफ इज कंटीन्यूअस मैपिंग ऑफ अ कंपैक्ट मेट्रिक स्पेस एक्स इनटू अ मेट्रिक स्पेस वाई देन वी हैव टू शो दैट एफ एक्स इज कंपैक्ट नाउ हियर एक्स इज गिवन टू बी एज अ कंपैक्ट मेट्रिक स्पेस एंड वी हैव टू प्रूव दैट एफ एक्स इज कंपैक्ट व्हेन एफ एक्स इज कंपैक्ट इफ आई शो दैट for an open cover of fx there exists a finite sub cover also for fx right okay before starting up with the proof let's read this definition a mapping f of a set e into rk is said to be bounded if there exists a real number m such that the modulus of fx is less than equal to that real number m for all x belonging to e right and then are the some important results i need to write which is used in proving the theorem let f be a mapping from x to y let a be the subset of x and b is a subset of y then if i take the f inverse of f a then this will contain the set a and if i take the f of f inverse b then it becomes the subset of b these two results are very important please remember this if f inverse lies outside the bracket then it is the larger one and if f inverse is inside the bracket then it becomes the smaller one to which the set belongs or not right then is if b1 is a subset of y and b2 is also the subset of y then f inverse of their union is equal to f inverse b1 union f inverse b2 very fine all right so these are the results which are important one and now starting up the proof we have to show that fx is compact we need to show that fx is compact for that we need an open cover of fx right so let's take v alpha to be the open cover of fx so let v alpha be an open cover of fx then by the definition of open cover fx is a subset of union of v alpha let's revise the remark again which is written over here if a is a subset of x then if i take the f inverse of f a then it will contain a set right so let's replace this a with x because x is also a subset of x so if i replace this a with x we write from here that f inverse of fx is containing x right let's write this the other way x is a subset of f inverse f of x and because fx is also contained in union of v alpha so from here we write that this is further the subset of f inverse union v alpha which is further written as union of f inverse v alpha so this implies x is a subset of union of f inverse v alpha now x is compact which means it has an open cover right and because x is a subset of unions of f inverse v alpha then from here we say that this f inverse v alpha becomes an open cover of x right so for a compact metric space x f inverse v alpha becomes the open cover of x and because x is compact its finite sub cover also exist so since x is compact and f inverse v alpha is an open cover of x so by the definition of compact set its finite sub cover also exist so there exist finitely many indices let's say alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 so on up to alpha n such that x is a subset of yes 
F inverse V alpha 1, union F inverse V alpha 2, union up to so on, F inverse V alpha N. Right? So that is equal to, which can also be written as F inverse of V alpha 1, union V alpha 2, union up to so on, V alpha N. So X is a subset of F inverse V alpha 1 union, V alpha 2 union, so on up to V alpha N. Right? So this implies F of X is a subset of F of F inverse V alpha 1 union V alpha 2 up to so on union V alpha N. Right? Understanding the second remark, if B is a subset of Y, then F of F inverse B is a subset of B. If you consider this complete to be as B, then from this remark we say, so that is, this left hand side is further the subset of this B. So that is F of F inverse V alpha 1 union V alpha 2 so on union V alpha N is a subset of this V alpha 1 union V alpha 2 so on union V alpha N. Right. So using this I am writing this result that this implies F of X becomes the subset of V alpha 1 union V alpha 2 up to so on union V alpha N. That becomes the subcover of Fx. Therefore, Fx is compact set. Hence the proof.